Devonta Smith is a wide receiver with league winning potential. So why is he being drafted in best ball formats outside the top 30? Well, I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to give you other options outside the top 30 that can help you win. Let's get to it right now. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Team Rise or Fall. My name is Michael Hoff. Follow me on Twitter at the FF Realist. Let's jump right into it. Devonta Smith, as mentioned in the open, drafted 10th overall by the Philadelphia Eagles. This is a wide receiver who has had over 30 receiving touchdowns in the last two years. So why is a player like this a Heisman Trophy winner drafted 10th overall? Why is he outside the top 30 right now? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because of the team that drafted him, the Philadelphia Eagles. You look back to 2018, they have only had two wide receivers that have had six receiving touchdowns. Not even more than that, just six. Greg Ward, Alshon Jeffrey. Not exactly names that pop off the page. Since the days of Freddie Mitchell, the Eagles have had trouble grooming these wide receivers. They will look to buck that trend with Devonta Smith. It's going to be up to the new head coach. It's going to be up to the offensive coordinator. It's going to be up to Jalen Hurts, who is now reunited with Devonta Smith, to help get this thing going. I think that they can do it. We know Jalen Rieger is going to open up camp in the slot. That could change. And also, I think that with Devonta Smith versatile enough, they're going to be able to utilize him in multiple ways. So I like Devonta Smith in best ball. Make sure you hit that smash button when drafting him. And while you're smashing buttons, might as well smash the like button here for this video. Might as well smash the subscribe button and hit that alert icon so you can be notified whenever we do go live. Next up, though, is going to be Will Fuller of the now Miami Dolphins, 38th wide receiver off the board in 2020. He scored eight touchdowns in 11 games. That's a career high eight touchdowns. Now, why didn't he play a full 16? Well, wasn't injuries this time. As a matter of fact, it was a PED suspension. So Fuller decides to sign a one-year prove-it deal, and he goes over to Miami. Now, the big disclaimer here with Will Fuller is going to be the fact that Deshaun Watson, as of now, unless there's a trade, uh, I'm sure Watson's hoping for it, Will Fuller is going to be playing with Tua, so it's going to be up to Tua to air it out. I do think we could see some situations. I know there's a lot of question marks with Tua, but I think Will Fuller can serve as a safety valve for Tua to air the ball out, let Fuller get under it, let him catch it. Listen, best ball formats, you just need a couple big games, and I think Will Fuller, we've seen him do it before. There's a reason why that name is familiar to you. I think that he can help this Miami Dolphins offense, and he can help your best ball lineups. So Will Fuller right now, 38th wide receiver off the board. You can do a lot worse than that. Next up for me is going to be Marquise Hollywood Brown, 44th wide receiver off the board. Listen, Mark Andrews was talking today in camp, talking about how Marquise Brown is going to absolutely tear it up this year, a different wide receiver than we're used to. And listen, one thing we're used to with Marquise Hollywood Brown might not be consistency all the time. I know he had a lot of trouble early on in the season last year, but this is a wide receiver. You saw the graphic. It was so nice. I'm going to flash it twice. He had three games with 15 or more points in the last six games. You remember that Monday night game against the Cleveland Browns, that absolute barn burner. He delivered in that game with a touchdown late. He's also caught a touchdown in 40% of his regular season games. 40%. So 40% of the time, Marquise Brown is getting in the end zone for you. That's hard to come by. That's not that easy. And now you're talking about a number one wide receiver. Because right now he's still a number one wide receiver in Baltimore. With Lamar Jackson as his quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in fantasy, why is he being drafted as a 44th wide receiver? I think this is fool's gold. I think that you should take advantage of this in your drafts. S continue to stack up that money. Listen, it's easy with these best ball drafts in the front, right? You're going to load up your roster with that top-level talent. You've got you've to gotta really bulk it up at the end. you got to make sure that you close it out strong. Hollywood Brown is a wide receiver who will absolutely close it out strong for you. So unequivocally, draft Marquise Hollywood Brown in best ball. Next up for me is going to be one of my favorite plays, and that is Michael Gallup of the Dallas Cowboys, 47th receiver off the board right now. Last two years, 100-plus targets. Not, not a ton of wide receivers are able to do that sort of thing. And here's the other thing I really like about Michael Gallup. He had 1,107 yards receiving in 2019. Last year, he had 843. Now, you might be saying dropping from 1,100 to 843. What do you like about that, Mike? Well, 
What I like about that is the fact that he did that with Ben DiNucci and Andy Dalton. Remember, Dak Prescott only played in five games last year before he suffered that gruesome ankle injury. Dak's ready to go. Dak is back. All the HIPAA stuff aside, he's going to be airing it out. I think we have the potential here to have three wide receivers with Dallas that are going to be able to post a 1,000 yards receiving. I like Gallup to get right between that 1,100 from 2019 and that 843 from last year, 2020. Those are good receiving numbers, especially for a wide receiver that you're getting as the 47th wide receiver. Michael Gallup might wind up having more receiving yards than any of these players that we're mentioning. This is why I love Michael Gallup. He'll probably give you about five to six touchdowns. Definitely a solid play. Listen, we're going to dip lower now, okay? We've been hanging out around that, you know, 30, 40 mark with wide receivers. Let's dip on down to 80. And let's go down to New Orleans with Mr. Trey Quan Smith, 80th wide receiver off the board. Five touchdowns in two of his last three seasons. And listen, here's the big thing, guys. We all know what's going on here. No Michael Thomas. We're hearing reports from Nick Underhill that Michael Thomas is going to need six to eight weeks post-surgery and then six to eight weeks to train to get back into shape to play. Listen, I know Drew Brees isn't in town. I know it's going to be Jameis Winston. It's going to be Taysom Hill. Traquan Smith is going to be thrust into a top wide receiver role in this offense. Sink or swim. It's going to be Traquan Smith. And here's the deal that I really like about Traquan. A lot of people don't realize this sort of thing is his efficiency, the way he's able to catch the football. He has caught the ball on 67.2% of his targets in his career. That's a good number, 67%. You look at the land of wide receivers, that's hard to come by consistently on a career basis. But Traquan has done it. So now you're giving me a player who – usually gets around five or so touchdowns, catches 67.2% of his passes. Now you're telling me he's going to get a big workload or so we imagine. Listen, they're signing guys like Chris Hogan. There's not incredible competition here for Trey Quan Smith, and you're getting him as the 80th wide receiver in best ball formats right now. Absolute slam dunk. I don't see why not. I am, listen, if it was early on, if you're asking me to spend Michael Thomas price, on Traquan Smith, then absolutely not. No, I'm not doing it. He's only had, never had more than 35 receptions in a season. But you're asking me to take him at 80. I'm going to run that risk, and I think it's going to pay off. So definitely take advantage of that today. Another wide receiver. We got two more wide receivers for you. And I'm going to go with a guy who is a little more familiar, a little bit more of a stable name. I mean, at least he used to be. Now he's getting a little bit older. Listen, he's played for 13, 14 years. He has seen his career stem from places like Philadelphia to Washington to Tampa Bay. Now he's going to L.A. He's going back to Cali, his hometown, went to college at Cal. Now we have Deshaun Jackson playing for the L.A. Rams, playing for Sean McVay, 105th wide receiver off the board. He has averaged 17.4 yards per reception in his career. I know Cooper Cup is there. I know Robert Woods is there. Here's the deal. You're not banking on, you know, I need this guy to get 100 targets. I know it's nice to have. We talked about Michael Gallup. It's nice to have that luxury. But in best ball, you really just need the home runs. And if Deshaun Jackson has taught you anything, throughout his NFL career, is that he is a home run hitter. Even to this day, injury questions aside, he can hit the home run. And again, if you have injury concerns, this is why he's being drafted as 105th wide receiver overall. You're not using a lot of draft capital to get yourself at Deshaun Jackson. So I would jump on Deshaun Jackson. I don't hate it. Listen, the other thing I really like about Deshaun Jackson is Matthew Stafford being there with Sean McVay. We know Sean McVay had some trust issues with Jared Goff. Sean McVay went out and sought Matthew Stafford. He made sure that they got Matthew Stafford. He spent a lot. The Rams aren't going to be having a first-round pick until your kids are going to college, and it was all to get Matthew Stafford. Sean McVay is going to let Matthew Stafford air it out, and Deshaun Jackson will be under a few of those, and he will give you some touchdowns, help give you some big weeks in best ball. My last wide receiver, listen, this is a deep dive. I need a snorkel for this one, but I'm doing it. I'm going with Devin Funches of the Green Bay Packers. Yes, Devin Funches. Is this thing on? Yes, it is. In 2020, he opted out due to COVID. Okay, understandable. 2019, 
only played in one game with the Indianapolis Colts. That was a shame. He signed a one-year deal, prove a deal, much like we talked about Will Fuller. He went from Carolina to Indianapolis, broke his collarbone in week one after catching three of five targets. So we haven't seen a lot of Devin Funches, but here's the deal. I know that there's this talk now that the Packers are going to try and trade for Randall Cobb. I think Devin Funches is built like a tight end. That's six foot five, 225 frame. He's a big bodied wide receiver. He will help in that red zone area where Robert Tanyan saw so much success. I think that's what we're kind of looking at here with the Devin Funches. So I think Devin Funches can jump in, fill in some of that role. I like him here. I think, listen, the Aaron Rodgers swan song could prove to be beneficial for Devin Funches in best ball formats. But, guys, that's going to do it. Those are my seven wide receivers in best ball format outside the top 30 to help you win. I hope you enjoyed this. Please make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.